All right, so welcome back to our flipped chemistry classroom. And today we are talking about chemical reactions and the chemical equations we use to describe those chemical reactions. So first, just let's talk about what is a chemical reaction. And I'm sure you guys could come up with a lot of different descriptions of a chemical reaction, and you could give me examples of a chemical reaction. But we're going to go ahead and define a chemical reaction as a process where one or more substances are transformed into one or more other substances. So we could have one substance breaking down into multiple substances. We could have multiple substances coming together to make one, or we could have two substances that change into two different substances. So there's a lot of different options here, so which is why we define it as one or more substances transforming into one or more other substances. So we're just gonna have a quick review of the indicators of a chemical reaction. We've talked about these before. Um, so one of our indicators of a chemical reaction is the emission of light or heat. So for example, when we burn a log, we know that's a chemical reaction. It emits both light and heat. We can also talk about the formation of a gas as an indicator of a chemical reaction. So just like when we put the aluminum wire into the hydrochloric acid and we saw the formation of gas bubbles on the wire, when we have the formation of a gas, that's an indicator of a chemical reaction. And very often when we see um, formation of a gas, we'll see it in the form of bubbles. We could also talk about the formation of a precipitate. So precipitate is a very specific term that means that we have combined two aqueous solutions. So two solutions in water, where we had chemical compounds combined with water. And when we combine those two solutions, something solid forms. And we call that the formation of a precipitate. So just like in your lab where you added the silver nitrate to the halogen salt solutions, and we got the formation of different colors of solids. That's the formation of a precipitate. We also talk about color change as an indicator of a chemical reaction. And very specifically, we talk about unexpected color change, meaning that it's not simply the product of mixing two colors and getting a third color that is the product of those two colors, but of um, mixing two things or creating a reaction and that generates a color. Okay, and the third one is emission of an odor. Usually the emission of an odor has to do with the formation of a gas, but sometimes we can't see the formation of a gas, but we can smell the formation of a gas. So anytime we have an emission of an odor, we can think of that as an indicator of a chemical reaction. So all of our chemical reactions are gonna have two parts. They're gonna have reactants, and those are the substances or perhaps the single substance that you have at the beginning. We have products, which are the substances that we have at the end. So our reactants, are rearranged, transformed, and become the product. And we write this with an arrow. All right, so let's talk about how we describe chemical reactions. So in a chemical reaction, please remember that the atoms, the way that they are joined together is changed. The atoms are not created or destroyed, okay? Simply rearranged, as we said in Dalton's atomic theory. We can describe a chemical reaction in a lot of different ways. We can describe it in a sentence. We can say copper reacts with chlorine to form copper two chloride. We can write a word equation, copper plus chlorine yields copper two chloride. Or we can write a formula equation, which when I read it out loud sounds exactly like the word equation because we now know how to name these compounds. So copper plus chlorine yields copper two chloride. So this is where that skill with being able to um, name compounds or um, write formulas from names is going to come in really handy because as we are describing chemical reactions, we're going to need to be able to write the formulas of the substances or name the substances that we have the formulas. Okay, so if we look at that last equation, there were some symbols in there. You guys can see some little symbols down here 
and this symbol here. So let's talk about what those symbols are and what they mean. So when we have the letter S in parentheses after a formula, that means that the substance is a solid. So this would be solid copper. If we have a G after the formula in parentheses, that means that the substance is in the gaseous form. So here we would have gaseous hydrogen. And of course, if we have an L after the formula, that means that it's in the liquid state. So here we have liquid water. If we have in parentheses AQ after the formula, that means that it is dissolved in water. We call this an aqueous solution. So hence the AQ. Okay. Um, all right, so those are the main symbols that we use in our equations. Um, after our formulas to tell us what the states of matter are. Now we have some other symbols that we use in equations. Um, we sometimes will see this double headed arrow that indicates that we have a reverse reaction or a reversible reaction. Okay, so it has an arrow at both ends. Um, we will also see sometimes a triangle on top of or below the arrow or the word heat, and either of those can be used to show that heat is being added to the reaction. Not that the reaction is generating heat, but that heat is being added to the reaction. And then our last um, symbol, well, no, not the last. One of the last symbols over or above our arrow is this um, arrow with either an elemental symbol like platinum or the word catalyst. And that tells us that a catalyst is being used in this reaction to make the reaction go faster. Um, in this first case, we can see that the catalyst that we're using is platinum. Um, if we have an arrow with the word pressure or with an actual pressure above or below it, that means that we are at a pressure other than standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so while we're on the subject of this catalyst, what is a catalyst? So a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the reaction without being changed by the reaction. So it may be used in the reaction, but then it'll be regenerated as part of the reaction. So it um, will begin with it and will end with it, and it is unchanged. We're used to talking about enzymes in biology class. Enzymes are protein catalysts or biological catalysts. Okay, so now we know all of the symbols that we use. We've talked about some of the ways that we can describe chemical reactions. Let's talk about what we call skeleton equations. So a skeleton equation uses the formulas and the symbols to describe a reaction. It does not necessarily indicate how many of each molecule are reacting. So another name for a skeleton equation would be an unbalanced chemical equation. It's just the bare bones. It doesn't tell us exactly how many of anything there are. So our chemical equation is gonna be a sentence that describes our reaction. Quick reminder before we start writing um, our chemical equations, um, we need to remember the diatomic elements. There are eight elements that never want to be alone. They form diatomic molecules when we use just that element in a reaction. So they are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Um, we remember them on our periodic table that um, these are the gens, the hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and halogens. Or we can remember that there are eight of them and it looks like a one and a seven. Okay, so that's gonna be important when we're writing equations that we write those as diatomics. All right, so let's convert this to an equation. So we have solid iron three sulfide reacting with gaseous hydrogen chloride to form iron two chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas. So we're gonna write iron three sulfide. We're gonna write its formula. This is what we've been practicing for the last 
week or so, right? Um, so iron three sulfide is gonna be Fe2S3. And then because it says solid, we're gonna have a little lowercase s in parentheses afterwards. And then it says gaseous hydrogen chloride. So we're gonna write HCl with a parentheses G to form. So we're gonna write our arrow, iron two chloride, FeCl2 and hydrogen sulfide gas, H2SG. Notice this is a skeleton equation. This is not balanced. We have two hydrogens here, only one here. Um, so skeleton equations are not balanced equations. They're just telling us what the substances are. But it's also really important to notice that in a skeleton equation, we are always going to write our formulas correctly. So we're going to write Fe2S for iron three, or sorry, Fe2S3 for iron three sulfide, because we want to make sure that our compound is neutral. So that's going to require two iron threes for three sulfide ions. And the same way with the hydrogen chloride, with the iron two chloride, and with the hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay, now can we go the other way? Can we take a formula equation and say it in words? So here, we're gonna take our Q from this little S and we're gonna say solid iron reacts with oxygen gas to form solid iron three oxide. And we know that it's iron three oxide because there are three oxygens to go with our two iron ions. Okay, one more example. Our silver coffee pot tarnishes. So solid silver reacts with hydrogen sulfide and oxygen in the air to make solid silver sulfide, the black material we call tarnish and water. So here's our clean silver coffee pot tarnishing and giving us a tarnished silver coffee pot. So we're gonna start with solid silver. So we're gonna have AG and then parentheses S reacts with hydrogen sulfide in the air. So that's gonna be H2SG because that's gaseous, it's in the air. And oxygen, remember oxygen is one of our diatomic molecules. So we're gonna write that as O2 gas to form solid silver sulfide. So Ag2S because sulfide is a negative two, silver is a positive one. So we need two silvers to go with our sulfur and water, H2O. And that's what our skeleton equation is going to look like. Again, far from being balanced, but it's a skeleton equation and that's okay. All right, so that is it for today. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you in class.